Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Dino Plays Modded Minecraft. This is Dino. Thanks for joining me. In the previous episode, we were doing a whole bunch of upgrading. We crafted the compact machines and went over that stuff. We moved our quarry to the mining dimension and all kinds of cool stuff like that. And I derped out at the beginning, completely couldn't remember what we had done in the previous episode, which was actually playing with Tinker's Construct and um, kind of doing some hunting in the nether for carbonite and ardite, I believe. And I um, feel really bad about that um, because I kind of wanted to show you what I had accomplished in that at, um, at the end of that episode because... Um, we'd gone over a little over 30 minutes, so I called it an episode, and but I decided to stay in the nether and do a little bit more mining for Ardite and such. And this is what I was able to collect. Um, I probably spent another maybe 20-25 minutes in there and got in total um, cobalt. Pardon me, I said carbonite. I always keep calling it carbonite. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, cobalt. So found 30 pieces um, of cobalt ore and 14 Ardite. So it does seem to be kind of a two to one ratio. That might just be per chance, but definitely Ardite is a lot harder to find than um, Cobalt. So yeah, uh, definitely harder to find. Um, even seems to be much closer to the edge of large lava fields. So um, if you didn't have the ability to morph into say, a blaze that might be kind of hard to reach that stuff but um, yeah, um, morphed into a blaze it's a it's a bit easier to reach it so um, I feel fortunate about that but yeah I wanted to kind of go over that with you to kind of uh, conclude that episode and uh, <laughs> totally spaced on what we had done in the previous episode so yeah so we're gonna be doing a bunch of um, things again in this episode and let's see so the first thing I wanted to kind of go over with you was um, this configuration. Voila! Look! So we, I introduced um, everybody to these compact machines. Um, not Maybe not all of you. Some of you might be playing with it already. Um, but it's new to me and um, was really excited to check it out. So we crafted one. I put it up there. Decided um, that this was getting really busy over here so that, hey, you know, it kind of qualified um, really well for a compact machine. So I went ahead and crafted another one, and you'll see that our ore processing system has been basically replaced by this one block. And now I'm just feeding in ores from that chest and, or pardon me, yeah, ores to that chest into um, the compact machine, and out comes our ores. So this is our ore chest, and, or um, ingots chest, pardon me. So our ores go in there, ingots come out up here, and then, then we have our power in the back. So we are using three inputs, the power in the back, um, or input here, ingots out up there. And it's possible we may not need these item conduits. I'm not completely sure. Um, I'm thinking you need them in order to pull items and send them into the compact machine. I don't know if the compact machine will automatically pull items. It, it might, you know, that might be worth testing maybe upstairs once we get on, um, um, go on to doing this again. Um, so yeah, because I'd be kind of curious, because without these um, conduits, then this really becomes nice and compact. I mean, about as efficient as you can get, I would think. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see if that would work that way. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and go inside and take a look at what it looks like on the inside. So, okay, we're inside and pretty much the exact configuration we had before, right? We have a chest feeding into a hopper, which goes into the pulverizer, which mashes everything into dust, two to one. The dust comes out here. Anything that's non-dust oriented stays here because if you remember, um, the pulverizer has a byproduct that sometimes can be produced. So the byproducts would stay in here, but the ores, because these are sorting chests, the ores go up there because all ores get sorted into this chest. The ores then get pulled out into our redstone furnace and the ingots go up into this chest which get automatically pulled out to these conduits, item conduits, and then go out to the top which as you recall 
um, goes into a chest where our ingots get stored. So ores come in the side, right? So the ores come in here, go into this chest, into the hopper, loops around, and then out and up to the top. So pretty much exactly what we had before. I mean, exactly, except for these cobblestone blocks, because I don't like physics fail. Physics fails, right? I like to have things seem logical. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we had before. And now all that functionality is stored in this one block, except for the inputs and outputs. So, awesome. Really, really like that. And that's a fairly simple one, you know. I mean, it's almost, you know, it's questionable whether or not it even warrants that. But, I mean, it did take up this whole space over here, and now it's not taking up hardly any space. And, and I can move it around now much more effectively as should I want to. So, yeah. Um, let's see. So the other, next thing I wanted to do was kind of show you the lava configuration that I had kind of shown you in a previous episode, um, two or three episodes ago. I believe I showed you the um, iron tank that I had created and this nice pink one over here in the corner for storing our lava. So yeah, we have lava coming in from the nether getting stored in here. And what I've done is I've changed it up a bit. So I'm now pulling the lava out the side behind this wall here. You can see the pipes going down below. And then below, I set up our um, energy processing system, a fairly simple one to get us started, um, which is a good which is a good setup. I've used it before and it, it works really well. So the lava is just pulled out of your um, your buffer tank, and then I have it going into these magmatic dynamos, which converts, I guess, the heat from lava right into um, energy. And so I have four capacitor banks here that gives us 20 million RF. Um, in storage. And then I have some of it going out here over to our magma crucible and our fluid transposers back here. So this energy now can start fueling, you know, fueling um, and running some of our machinery. And this is kind of the machinery wall. So yeah, that's what I've done so far. Um, the funny thing about this is that um, I upgraded some mods in, um, in the two, two episodes ago, and I had upgraded Buildcraft to a 617, um, which is a fairly significant upgrade from, I think I was running for a late version 5 or maybe an early, early version 6. Um, but 6.1 is a, is a pretty significant update. So I went ahead and updated it as soon as the dependent mods had been updated to support that version, which finally occurred with the tubes mod. I was waiting for that one, but once that one got updated, um, then I went ahead and updated everything to support the newest version of Billcraft. The problem is that, um, that I think there might be a bug in um, the latest version of Billcraft in terms of uh, pulling lava using a, the pump, the Billcraft pump. And I don't know if it's unique to lava. I need to go look at the, our, um, our oil pump. But, and I'm not even sure if it's a bug. It might be a configuration change that I'm not fully aware of. So I guess it, for those of you that are experienced using the latest version of Billcraft, if you've experienced anything funny or unusual with um, um, Billcraft pumps, let me know because I'm not sure what the heck's going on, but but basically what's happening is um, it's just stopped pumping lava, and I don't I don't understand why. Let's go ahead and portal over. I've kind of moved a whole bunch of stuff around, so I apologize if this one's a little bit muddy. But um, let's see. So Nether lava pump one. Whoa. Oh, we do have one. Hey, guy. Pardon me a second while I deal with this guy. He's going to be annoying. I should probably morph into a blaze. That might help. Oh, and not throw my sword at him. <laughs> That's so funny. 
Let's take care of this guy. Nice. And look, we got us a couple of uh, tears. Awesome. Boy, they sure make a mess. Look at that. My goodness. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, let's put this out before it catches everything on fire. So I like this area. It's kind of neat. Reminds me of the overworld, right? <laughs> With the grass and on the top and stuff. Anyway, yuck. What a mess. So, okay. Um, but what I wanted to show you before we got uh, waylaid by a ghast is... Uh, where am I going? Um, I got it all turned around. Okay. Wow, I'll have to clean this up. He made a big mess. So this was where our original pump was. And for some reason, it stopped pumping lava. And as you can see down there, there's still plenty of lava down there to pump. So I don't know why. I kind of broke it down, reset it back down, thinking maybe something got misset or something. But it, it would not work. It just would not pump lava out. So I went ahead and... Um, moved it to a new location and I don't have a waypoint so I'm gonna to have to cheat a little bit here I apologize for that and use just the waypoints in um, the mini map but I kinda of wanted to show you this so um, make sure it's safe around here because it's a little more precarious up here it's way up here look at that I'm way up so I set up um, a new configuration over here thinking maybe god there's something with the lava over there I don't know I was just grasping at straws now because I, I just don't quite understand what's going on set it up here and same behavior just what didn't seem to work I, I wouldn't pump any lava so what I had to do was I switched over to an endothermic pump right here and hopefully this guy's working it was sort of working yeah I think it's still working um, I'm not familiar with endothermic pumps. I mean, I have never used it before. Um, I know it's really popular in servers because it's lagless pretty much. Um, but I decided, well, I don't know what else to do. I need a, to pump lava. So I just switched from Billcraft pumps to this endothermic pump and had a lot of trouble getting it to work only because I'm, I'm a newbie at it and have no clue what I'm doing. So I um, had to mess around, play with it a little bit. Um, finally figured out that it's got to be absolutely on top of the lava. I was one block up and it didn't seem to want to work. But as soon as I moved it, and there you can see there's the um, the other, the second pump that I was trying to get to work. It doesn't seem to be working. But anyway, the endothermic pump does seem to be working now. And of course, it's not pumping any, well, seems like it should be pumping, but um, I'm not going to question it right now because I believe our our buffer tank is pretty much full, so as long as it's full, it's not going to pump anything out. So that's probably what's happening here. It's probably not pumping anything because... Um, oh, wait a minute. No, it's not getting energy. Why is that turned around? That is weird. Yeah, that's why. I have no idea what happened there. That is the weirdest thing. Now it's working. Which makes sense. It should still pump, but then just remain full. The fact that it wasn't full made me wonder what the heck's going on. And that's why. Oh, good. I'm glad I caught that. I have no idea what happened there. This block here that I just busted wasn't there before either, so I don't know what happened. Um, anyway. But I love this configuration. I mean, I know next to nothing about endothermic pumps, but this is really, really nice. Because um, basically you got this one block. I mean, I had about ten blocks before. If you total up everything required to set up that configuration using the Billcraft pump, you need about 10 items. And this one, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, I thought I had less than that. Anyway, it's way more efficient. This block feeds the lava directly into the tank. Um, that is... oh... Don't, don't even think about it. Um, I've got to think here a second. Why? It's going to be... Yep, yeah, something. Something changed here. Oh, I see what happened. 
Okay, pardon me a second while I fix this configuration. That is creepy. That is creepy noise. I'm creeping out, guys. Let's get rid of these. Um, this should be down here. Not move up. Oh, man. Oh, I'm just derping all over the place. Jeez. Come on. Set this right there. Thank you. Now it's working properly. Let me make sure the directions are correct. There we go. Okay. So I moved it above the lava. I must have forgot to move this down. So, yeah, I'm glad I came back and caught these issues. See, now it's working again. It wasn't working as efficiently before because it wasn't quite getting enough energy, enough power. But basically, this pulls lava up. The lava goes two directions. It goes into your magmatic dynamo and then up into your ender tank. And then power just goes from one over to the other. So this is a perpetual circle right here. The endothermic tank needs the power. This guy needs lava. This guy gets lava, puts lava in there, and it just cycles through forever. It's just self-sustaining now for as long as there's lava. And then lava goes up into the endothermic tank, and we're good. And I believe I can even set the endothermic tank right on top of this guy, so you don't even need this middle this middle um, conduit, I believe. Um, but I'll leave it for now, because it is working. And uh, thank goodness. So I'm glad I came and checked that out. See, I would have it would have probably worked a little bit longer and then probably ran out of power. Oh boy. Okay. So, but to get back, make a long story short, I think there might be something wrong with the Billcraft pump. So if you guys are aware of anything in a configuration change for 6.1 that might have impacted how the Billcraft pumps work, or if you're aware of a bug or something, or whatever, you know, whatever your thoughts are, I'd like to hear them because I would really I like this configuration. I'm probably going to stick with it because it's very compact and efficient. But at the same time, trying to set one of these down right on top of the lava is a precarious situation. So um, I'd always like to at least be able to um, rely on the original design because with that original design, you can go up high, kind of like what we did there, and the pump will just reach down and suck up the lava until it dries out. Um, so I kind of would like to get that configuration working again. So, yeah, I spent a little more time on this than I wanted to. I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and head back um, before I get sidetracked again <laughs> and uh, move on to the next topic, which is to set up a new, our new energy configuration for our quarry because trying to bring capacitor banks as they get depleted back into the quarry to keep the quarry running is irritating. And it's fine for a short period of time, but it's time to move on now that we've got our um, pretty good supply of lava and a pretty good supply of energy now getting stored in our capacitor banks. What I've done is I've configured this third magmatic dynamo to feed into this phased kinesis pipe. And this phase kinesis pipe is basically a teleport pipe that'll teleport energy to its receiver. So if you right click on this guy, it's just got a real similar interface to other um, teleportation um, items that I've seen in the game before from prior um, versions. And i um, glad to see that they have an equivalent one here. I think there was a, um, a mod called teleport pipes in um, in prior versions that just no longer got maintained. So I'm really glad to see sort of an equivalent here with the additional pipes mod. So these phased kinesis pipes, basically you, you click on them, you can send and or receive, it can be private or public. I guess that's its location. Um, you give it a frequency so you can have unique combinations of, um, of capability and then um, so this one's this one's good to go. So it sends only to frequency one, um, and that's that's it. So what we'll do now is um, I haven't turned it on. So let's go ahead and turn it on, and you'll see now our magmatic dynamo is running. And uh, is it actually? 
generating energy yet? No, it's not. It's not sending any energy yet. Oh, it's probably because the buffer's not high enough yet. Um, let's just wait a second, make sure it's actually going to kick on. Um, it may not actually kick on without a receiving unit. So I guess we won't worry about that. It's, it's technically on, and it'll send energy into this phased kinesis pipe. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and go over to our mining dimension, right, where our quarry is located, because I think it's pretty much ran out of energy. So it's waiting to be um, restarted. And we'll go ahead and set up the receiving end over there. So I believe we, all we really need are these two items right there. So let's go ahead and get over there. Whoa, well that freaked me out for a second. The textures weren't on and that looked black. Okay, so our quarry is over there. So let's go ahead and get over to our quarry. Oh, I probably could have teleported, but I'll just fly over there real quick. It's it's pretty close. Oh, we got some witches under there, underground there. Okay, so here's our quarry, and I believe, yeah, see, it's down good ways, but it's not done yet. So let's go ahead and get down here, and yeah, you can see our capacitor banks are empty. So what we'll do is we'll break that down. We're no longer going to need those. Right, come back here, pick those guys up. And then I believe all we need to do now is take the gold one and plunk it down here. And then take the phased one and plunk it down there. And then turn it to receive only and one. And it turns on, see, and voila. Isn't that awesome? That is so awesome. So now we've got an unlimited supply of power completely coming into our quarry. And I believe this gold one's required because I think I tried it or tested it once just using the kinesis pipe straight in there, but it doesn't work. I think it requires this intermediate um, kinesis pipe. It doesn't have to be gold, I don't think. It can be another one. It could probably be even wood. But um, of course, gold has the least resistance and is the most efficient. I think it can support up to 256 um, RF per tick, something like that. So if you can do it, I would probably recommend the gold kinesis pipe. And uh, you can see it's a little bit slower than just using the capacitor banks. Um, because we only have it's only being ran off of one magmatic um, dynamo. Whereas the uh, capacitor bank has um, a much higher output capacity. I actually don't know what the um, RF per tick capacity is of the magmatic dynamo. I might I might need to look that up. But to be honest with you, I don't you know, I'm not worried about the speed. I don't mind it being a little slower like this. Um, because I'll be darned, you know, I mean it was really flying before. And, you know, that just requires a lot more babysitting. Yeah, because it, you know, it'll get it done faster and then you gotta come over and move it and stuff. And we don't need items that quickly. We just need a steady supply, right? So I don't mind it being a little bit slower. And if I need to, I can probably just hook up a second magmatic dynamo and have two of them feeding into the, uh, the face kinesis pipe and speed it up. So we can double, we can triple, we can do whatever we want just by adding more um, magmatic dynamos. So um, cool. So that's done. And you can see that's a little more compact now as well. And I love the ability to be able to turn it off back at the base, right? So if I don't, if I don't want the, uh, so right now I don't have um, a really large capacity storage facility yet. Um, so we're probably going to run into space is storage space issues here pretty soon. And um, and when that starts to happen, I'm probably going to want to turn it off, you know, to you know maybe to expand things. Um, so the ability to just flip that um, switch and turn it off here at the base is pretty nice. I think that's going to be handy. So let's go back, just double check things one more time. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's going to be nice. And I'll put, um, I'll, I'll, I'll block that up here soon. And I'll kind of show you how, how I how to do that using Ender.io for those of you that may never have seen that before. So yeah, there it is, it's on. 
Um, that's pretty much at zero because it's pretty much converting lava to energy as fast as it's receiving lava, which isn't that big of a surprise, right? But again, we could put a second one up here and feed them both into the um, kinesis pipe if we want to, and that should double double the speed. Because um, then we'll have 40,000, we'll go to 80,000 RF if needed. And again, that switch right there, I'll just toggle it off and on. So if I want to turn the quarry off, I just flip that switch. This guy gets turned off. And since it has no buffer, it'll just immediately turn off. So pretty cool. I like it. Should have done that sooner. Except that I really didn't have this facility set up because we really didn't have um, our infinite lava source yet. So all well, makes sense, I guess. So the next thing I want to do real quick is I started working on... Let's go ahead and put these in here. There we go. I started working on Tesseract frames. Um, and that was sort of before I discovered that these additional pipes had these kinesis pipes. And I think these are going to be pretty convenient, but I don't know that these are going to be um, ideal in every situation. So I do believe we're going to need to go um, eventually um, to Tesseracts anyways. And it's been a while since I've actually crafted these using the new recipes because when I was playing with Tesseracs in the past, it was a couple of versions back. So I think now the new process is we have to use these fluid transposers to fill it with, um, with um, ender juice, I guess, for lack of a better term. So let's go ahead and put these in here. Um, Golly, I'm not completely sure how to do it. Like I said, I'm not I'm not used to this. How do, how do we do that? Um, is that right? Oh boy, I honestly I, I really don't know how to do it. So I thought you just put ender pearls in here and it would. Um, or maybe I have to make fluid ones first using the magmatic crucible. I'll bet that's what it is. I was wondering why I put these two together. Um, it was quite a number of episodes back when I started doing some research on this and um, trying to figure out how to do it. So that's six, I believe, in there now. And I honestly don't know how to get it out. <laughs> oh, this is, I think I, I think I can feed it right into this guy. I think. Um, I think. I don't quite remember. Okay. Well, I'm not quite as prepared with this stuff as I had hoped. I kind of had some things here. Toggle fill. Hmm. Maybe, I don't know if I can do it using buckets or not. Let me, um, let's go grab a bucket real quick and see. Oh, by the way, um, I'm not really using, oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> I'm not using the telepads much right now, to be honest with you, even because you're probably wondering, well, why isn't he just using the telepad to go back and forth? Well, there's a bit of a bug in there. And if you look at the forums, it's been reported. But basically, as soon as you teleport, this menu, which is a really nice size and you can see it, goes high res. So it's really tiny and hard to see. So there's a bug in the telepad. It totally functions fine. You can teleport around and all. But then your this menu system inside the game goes high res and you can't see anything. So I'm kind of avoiding that, especially while I'm recording. Um, do I have any empty buckets? Um, here's one, okay. Let's go check that out, see if this actually works real quick. And if it doesn't, hey, we'll, we'll move on. Close the door. That's good policy. Right? Okay, so let's see now how this might work. Can you empty? Uh, it doesn't look like you can. 
at least not via this method. Yeah. Um, is that right? Huh. No. So blue, blue is definitely the input. Power's ignored. I think I should be able to pump it out of one of these sides. I just need to figure out which one over into this guy. I just don't know if it's automatic or if it requires um, a conduit in between them. It, it might require a conduit in between them. See that? Oh, I see. That's not even a bucket. That just toggles the direction from emptying to filling. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Well, if that... Well, see, that's the problem, though. I don't have ender juice in there. I'll have to figure out how to do that. All right. Well, that's enough experimenting for now because there's other things I want to do. So we'll finish crafting that up as soon as I figure out how to get the um, ender juice in there. The last thing I wanted to do was kind of get started um, on something that I keep talking about doing. And I did in the last episode as well is um, kind of the lighting and we're already over 30 minutes so I'm probably not going to be able to go much further with it in this episode as well again and I'm sorry about that but um, I can still show you what what I wanted to do so there's these lanterns which I keep popping up and showing you every time I open this <laughs> this interface so the reason why I have them here is because um, I want to craft this guy the sandy stone lantern and you'll notice there's quite a number of types and colors available. I think this one might look the best simply because of the um, kind of the this oak color. Um, I think the sandstone might look as good as well, but I think it might match up to the oak color a little too closely. And I kind of want to use these kind of um, brown colored um, alternatives as kind of a complementary um, color, you know, an accent. So I was thinking this might be pretty good. And if you have um, ideas or opinions on these other colors, hey, I'm totally open to every idea and suggestion. So definitely leave your comments below. To craft those, you need these um, the sandy cobblestone, which I saved one last one to show you. And you basically smelt it. And it'll smelt into these sandy blocks. And you need these sandy blocks in order to craft the sandy stone lantern. And I'll show you how to do that. So you basically take two of these blocks and a torch in between and voila. And you get these sandy lanterns, sandy stone lanterns. And so I don't know how many we're going to need around our base, probably quite a few. But I'll just go ahead and craft like, I don't know, 12 of them right now. Well, 13, I like even numbers, we'll just go 14. So we'll just go ahead and do that. We'll save these for crafting more later on when we have a better idea of how many we're going to need. And then let's go ahead and put a few down just to kind of show you what they might look like as soon as I... Uh, am I still morphed? I'm still morphed. As soon as I turn back into human and sleep so we're not surprised out there while we're wandering around our base. We should be pretty safe. I mean, there's a lot of light out there, but just in case. So, okay. So let's go ahead and put one down here. It's a good spot for one. And I think what looks pretty good... Oh, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. I didn't want sticks. Um, I need some fencing real quick. So let's get some fences. go good enough for now and what I meant to do was put these fences down so if you put two of them down then you can put the lantern on top and it looks pretty nice oh <laughs> not what I meant not what I meant all right, let's just do it this way. Make it simple. 
Um, oh, okay. I'm not sure the right tool. So there we go. Uh, why are you glitching out? I don't know why it was glitching out. Let's step back. There you go, guys. That looks really, really nice. See, it's a slightly different brown color than the lighter um, birch and oak. It actually, it blends into the oak pretty well. I guess it's fine. I was thinking it was a slightly different color brown. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess it's okay. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, let me know, let me know your thoughts. Um, you know, leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of that. Um, so yeah, we. I'm thinking we're gonna want to strategically place those. Oh, about seven to eight blocks apart. So I'm not quite sure how symmetrical that's gonna wind up in all instances, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven would be right here. Um, I guess that's fine. Right? <laughs> I need to practice that. Because that is a little harder than I would think. Let's see if I can do this one again. <laughs> nope. There, there we go. So there, yeah. And I believe, I'm pretty sure, I might be surprised, but I'm pretty sure that at night these light up. They're supposed to light up. So I guess we'll find out. So there's two. And I'm just thinking that um, that might be pretty nice um, all around our base in strategic spots. I do ideally want to have everything lit up appropriately. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll want lanterns everywhere. And then we might need to kind of come up with something a little more creative in other areas where we need lighting. Um, you know, in our base, for example, we used um, jack-o'-lanterns. Um, but we have jack-o'-lanterns and glowstone and other options. So we got lots of choices. So even if we don't use these everywhere, we've got choices for um, where we might want to place things maybe in between and stuff. So, you know, we could maybe put a piece of glowstone down and maybe um, a bush or something around it to kind of hide it and make it look like it's more part of the um, landscape. Anyway, we can get pretty creative. If you have ideas on that, please share those with me as well because I'm totally open to all kinds of ideas right now. So that's what I wanted to cover um, in a nutshell this episode. Uh, didn't quite complete everything the way I had wanted, but uh, um, did introduce everything at least and covered, covered some stuff and fixed a few things, which was unexpected, but i um, very glad that we did. So anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and call it an episode here. I've gone long again. I um, hope that's okay. So uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, uh, please do give it a like. I really appreciate that. It helps my channel grow. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, uh, please consider subscribing. It's free and you'll get notifications for when each episode gets released. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Um, see you later. Bye-bye, everybody.